All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to another episode of the Remarkable Coach Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and joining me today is Dan Lefebvre. Dan received life's second chance when he survived a severe car accident that took three lives. He struggled through brain injuries, business failures, heartbreaks, running marathons, and battles with fear and doubt so that he could have more impact in the world. This is also Dan's encore presentation on The Remarkable Coach, his second appearance here. Um, his first appearance, uh, I encourage you guys to pause this and go back and check out his uh, our, our first podcast together, which was released on August 31st, 2021, so about two years ago, um, and that was a great one. Dan, welcome back to The Remarkable Coach. Thank you, Michael. It's awesome to be here. Yeah, I appreciate you making time to chat with me today, man. Um, so for those of our listeners and viewers who haven't had a chance yet to go back and listen to the, the, our first episode together, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do in your own words and kind of catch us up to speed? Sure. Uh, well, my business is uh, all about coaching founders that are hungry, humble, and smart that want to scale their businesses. And I help them remove the bottleneck. So I help them simplify in order to multiply. And, um, you know, that's it, it in, a, in, in a nutshell. But you know what, the key here is that you have to, you have to break things down, you have to um, simplify and, and standardize things before you can multiply. And I didn't realize that I had done that in my past. But when I was starting back in the 90s, I helped my brother scale a business to over seven figures in a few years. And I did that for him and I didn't know what I was doing. I was just, you know, kind of winging it, you know, <laughs> bootstrapping. And, um, you know, and then later on, I had the opportunity to do it with something much bigger. And I was hired to manage a commercial portfolio and there was eight sources of revenue. And when I finished with it, we had a real estate database. We had standard processes, standard agreements, all sorts of standards so that anybody who came to us, especially big corporations like wireless carriers, there was like, it was easy. It was just easy. They just said, yes, they don't want to look anywhere because it's hard. That's hard, right? So, so I just simplified everything and I grew that to about 24 million in revenue and it has since gone on to 35, 40 million. I, I stopped checking in, but uh, it's still growing. So, uh, so yeah, simplifying, standardizing, setting up processes yeah. because that's the foundation. If you don't have that foundation, scaling is going to be a grind it's going to be you know willpower which is if you're doing it by on willpower like that's an energy vampire <laughs> it's going to so suck you, so you've got a big focus essentially it sounds like on ops right and and creating sops processes things that that can help scale yeah well i don't necessarily like the, the sops are part of the process okay. um i'm helping break down where the bottlenecks are okay. there's something called constraints theory and it's and there's uh, something called a singularity and singularity is the same thing as a bottleneck so we're always looking for bottlenecks and most times with business owners they are the bottleneck and so then it's about figuring out what that bottleneck is and then simplifying it breaking it down and then finding the right team players reverse engineering designing it getting the right team players in place and then building from there and you also need to have standards like standards of excellence like personal standards team standards and then everybody has to operate under those team standards and if they don't then or if they break them then you come together as a team to solve it and most businesses don't run that way most times when things go wrong it's an emotional blowout mm -hmm. <laughs> and then somebody gets blamed or fired right instead of saying hey you know john that was a uh, you know a code eight mm -hmm. <laughs> right according to our standards and uh, what can we do to fix it? Let's all get together and let's sort this out. And unfortunately, if John keeps repeating these habits, I don't know if you believe that how you do anything is how you do everything. Sure. So, yeah. So if that's true, then that person is going to repeat those habits. And therefore, either they have to find another team or they are let go. And um, so it's, it's like a, it's a process for building a dream team, which most businesses don't take that kind of approach. I like it. I like it. One of the things that we have at, at Boxer um, is we call it an error log. And it's just a, a spreadsheet. Whenever we, we, whenever anybody, whenever we find a mistake, we'll note it in the error log. And then we've got columns for, for what we've learned, 
um, what processes need to be updated to ensure that you know this 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 doesn't happen again, um, and then someone to take uh, you know responsibility for for ensuring that what we learned gets implemented, so that you know the the, the issue doesn't happen again. Is that something that that a kind of thing that you would uh, you would do, or have you have you had any experience with a system like that? Not necessarily, but it, it sounds phenomenal because obviously mistakes are going to happen. And yeah. I, I don't know if you believe this, but events are repeated until lessons learned. So, right. um, so you're avoiding that by creating a system for tracking that. And also the brain learns through making mistakes or surprises. Mm -hmm. And surprises are not fun, typically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so the, the, the ones that you know hit you in the face, right? It's like, you know, it's like that Mike Tyson quote, everything's fine until you get punched in the face. Yeah. <laughs> so so a few punches in the face and you realize, hey, this is recurring and then but then you have the data to fix it, which is awesome. So yeah, if you're collecting that information, then you can avoid it in the future. And it might mean changing processes or you know, a new system, or it might mean mean shuffling the team or eliminating somebody. But yeah. at least you have that information. So yeah, good on one you. of the things one of the things that I found is very important around maintaining and, and keeping and, and implementing and using a system like this is to uh, have a, a blameless work culture, right? At least in terms of, of mistakes. An honest mistake is an honest mistake. No one is ever gonna get in trouble for an honest mistake. Um, what is important for us is that we learn from those mistakes, right? And and and, and that and that things uh, that when mistakes are made, that that is a catalyst for a shift in in thinking, and again a shift in processes or shift in SOPs, whatever it takes then to kind of ensure um, again that, that that we don't repeat that same mistake, right? Because we did learn from it. We talk about it as a group. We talk about it at our weekly meetings. Anything that's in, we go through the error log every week. Um, and instead of pointing fingers at people, what we do is point fingers at the problem and say, what happened here and what can we learn from it? What's our takeaway? Yeah. What's the breakdown? Yeah. Because I think what you're describing, I don't know if you've seen this model before, but there's an accountability loop and a victim loop. And huh. basically the accountability loop is where you take responsibility, you take action, follow through all those things. But if that's not happening, then by default, people are in a victim consciousness. They're in the victim loop was they blaming, complaining, denying, lying, avoiding, mm -hmm. right? So it's like you can't have, you know, one foot in the accountability loop and the other one partially in the victim. Like you either are on one side or the other, right? So yeah. I haven't um, I haven't heard of those, but that sounds that sounds in alignment. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, you want people to be self accountable, taking responsibility, taking action. And when you have that, then nobody is is getting into blaming mode because when people do that, guess what? Emotions go really high mm -hmm. and intelligence tanks. Yeah. So then people exactly. make horrible decisions and say horrible things that they can't take back. And so you're avoiding that just by this practice alone. So good for you. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good one. And kind of I, I spoke, I think I thought it spoke a little bit to kind of what you were talking about. Um, but, but circling back to, to, to you, Dan, tell us what's, uh, you know, the last time we spoke, it was 2021. Um, our episode was published in, on August 31st of 2021. So I'm guessing you and I probably spoke in July at some point. Um, what, what is new, uh, with your business since then? What's on your radar today? Um, tell us a little bit about, uh, what's, what's been going on. Sure. Well, the, I think the core thing is that really excites me is that um, there's a principle that 10x is easier than 2x. And one of my mentors is he wrote a book about this, Ben Hardy. And um, so, you know, the idea that you can 10x rather than 2x, because 2x is actually doable and 2x, 2x actually gives you lots of options. Mm -hmm. 10x is like a triage. It's like you have to solve this problem. You don't have time to waste. So you actually get really narrow on your focus mm -hmm. and you only take actions because if 80 percent of what you're doing every day is distraction which there's research on then man it's an uphill climb right you're, you're really battling against something that's maybe invisible right that you you can't see what the distractions are or the habits right mm -hmm. so um so that that's really uh that's exciting me um 
And the other thing is, and, and I'm working with founders that are scaling their businesses. They have teams of people. They just haven't built their business on a foundation, strong foundation. It's built on a foundation of sand. It's built like it's an owner operator type uh, approach. Um, so they're, they're scaling. And the other thing is that people don't realize the power of asking effective questions. Now you might've heard this, but, um, if you think about it, like you might have an Alexa or one of those, you know, Google minis or something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so when we ask questions to those devices, mm -hmm. if we don't ask it properly, we get all sorts of junky answers, right? <laughs> like just, you know, useful, useless information. And it's the same thing on even chat GPT. If you played around with that, I was just going to say, this is, this is, I will triple quadruple down on, on that statement for, for AI. Because if you are asking the wrong prompts to something like chat GPT or any of these, you know, GPT four based AI models, um, it's, you're not going to, yeah, you're, you're going to get garbage, garbage in, garbage out. Right. Yeah. So here's what's really fascinating. And I, I mean, I don't know everybody in the world in terms of coaching and so on, but I don't know that most people are doing this. Like James clear talked about it in his book. So he'll, he said things like, uh, in Atomic Habits, he said, you know, like, who's the type of person? So if you're asking who's the type of person, again, that's a prompt, right? That's you're prompting yourself, who's the type of person? And what does that person do? Or if you even like Noah St. John, he wrote, wrote a book called The Little Book of Affirmations. Mm -hmm. Affirmations is a term he came up with. It's basically an affirmation turned into a question. Mm -hmm. Because the principle here is that your conscious mind responds to statements, your subconscious mind responds to questions. So, okay. so if the, so let's just agree for a moment here that questions are the answer, which is what these guys are saying, mm -hmm. then we should be prompting our subconscious mind better because Carl Jung said, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Mm -hmm. so, so in essence, we got to get into the subconscious mind. And how do you get in there? You ask questions. And there's also another part of our mind called the reticular activating system, which is called the RAS or uh, yeah, reticular activating system, yep. RAS. So it's a filter that governs our life. Mm -hmm. And here's what's governing everybody's life is self-worth. So we won't accept things that we're not feeling worthy, deserving and, and worthy of receiving and deserving to receive. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Until we ask those questions, flip the filter around, like switch it, right? Rewire this, like get new software in there, make it hardware. Until we do that, until we ask better questions, we're not going to get the solution. I'll give you a perfect example. A client of mine had a son who spilt his coffee, spilt his dad's coffee on his chest, big red burn, right? It's hot, you know, hot coffee. So I get a message from him and he's like, spilled hot coffee and my son don't know what to do. And I said, oh, I know what to do. A few months ago, my son spilled some hot water in his leg. And we had to go through the same process. And, you know, what did we do? We contacted my brother-in-law, who's a doctor. We did all this YouTube research. So in a triage situation like that, you're asking dozens of questions, maybe hundreds, yeah. really fast. And so why wouldn't we do the same thing in business to solve our problems? Uh -huh. Like, you see, we're, we're solving a problem that's immediate, that's maybe for somebody else. But in business, we should do the same thing. We should prompt our own subconscious mind and the beauty of it. And, and I'm getting, you know, I'm guessing that most people may not understand how the mind operates, but just trust that 96, 98% of our subconscious mind is running our lives. That's based on research. Uh -huh. So it's there in the background, operating, doing its thing, storing data. It's not doing any thinking though, because that's our conscious, right? And yeah. uh, so yeah. we got to get in there. And so the easiest way is hit it with questions and do that consistently. And you probably heard it like there's there's talks on mind valley where a guy said he kept asking himself how can i make a hundred million dollar business out of this and he just kept asking and asking and asking uh -huh. and um you know even einstein he was a good asker he asked tons of questions right so if we get better at asking questions and kind of attack it from different angles guess what the answers start to show up evidence starts to show up and that's yeah. where you're talking about the reticular activating system, where yeah. when you ask that question, then your 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 brain is going to be subconsciously looking for the answer. Yeah, yeah. And the beauty you don't have to you can ask it, 
set it, it's like I said it and forget it. You ask the question, go on with your business and it's going to keep working on solving that. And even just a little side note as well, at night is the best time because when you ask it before you go to sleep, then your, mar your mind marinates on that all night trying to solve it. And it's unencumbered by your conscious mind because you shut it off, right? You, got, you went to sleep. So. There's, there's, a great, there's a great book. I don't know that it is worthy of being a book because the, the concept is so simple, but it's written by the guy who was the uh, showrunner for MacGyver. Remember the TV show MacGyver? The guy could, you know, get out of any situation and make a bomb out of a, a, a toothpick and a roll of toilet paper. And so obviously the, the show writer for this, right, has to be incredibly creative because they have to come up with, with these difficult situations for him to get into and really creative, uh, unique ways for him to get out of those situations. And what he... I'll give you the summary of the book in, in a couple sentences. What he would do is he would write down on, you know, a, a notebook here and, and he, he would, he would write down the question, how, you know, here's here, he would, he would write down the scenario, MacGyver's in this situation. How does he get out of this? You know, how, how do we, how do we resolve this? Whatever the question is that he had, he'd, he would write it down and then he would leave the office and he'd go on a walk. He'd go for lunch. He would just, he would just leave. Um, and, and let, let it do its work. And then yeah. he said every, every, every time, you know, if, if it wasn't the same day, maybe the next day he'd come back and the answers would just, would, would present themselves. So he's turning a problem. sounds like he's turning a problem into a question, which is exactly what needs to happen. If we don't do that, then we usually ask questions that are taking us further into the problem that take us backwards. Mm -hmm. That's what most people do. They're like, how come this isn't working? How, you know, how much more should I put in? How much, you know, how much more money do I have to put into this? I mean, if Elon Musk asked that about the 200 million he put into SpaceX, we wouldn't have rockets landing, you know, auto, 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 autonomously. Right. Yeah. So, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so what, you, what you're saying there then, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it, it's important to frame the question uh, as, as though it were moving towards a solution and not facing the problem itself. Yeah. Like outcome based. So you have the problem, flip it and turn it into a question. So you can do that with any situation, but again, most people don't think like this or look at the situation like this because they don't understand the science and brain science and psychology behind it. They don't, they don't get it. No. But if they did and they realized, wow, is this how all these major, you know, hugely successful people are accomplishing what they're doing? Is it because they're just flipping things, turning into a question? Because we know through psychology, there's confirmation bias. That's, that's evidence. Mm -hmm. So guess what? We say we're going to buy a Tesla. Next thing you know, we're seeing Teslas everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we don't question why. We're just like, wow, I didn't notice all these Teslas before, but they're <laughs> out there. They're everywhere. That's confirmation bias. So guess what? If you ask the question, now your mind starts looking for evidence. So it starts bringing you opportunities and situations that will prove that correct. It's, I, I know it sounds like kind of miraculous or hocus pocus or woo woo, but. <laughs> well, I mean, there's the, the woo woo side of it, right. Is in, in my opinion is we're talking about the secret, right? The, 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 the book for those of you guys, I'm sure most people are familiar with this by Rhonda Byrne. Mm -hmm. This is totally what this is. And, and this is, again, this is kind of like the woo woo side of it, but there's, it's all backed by, it's all backed by behavioral science and, and cognitive science and everything. Yeah. The, the point of all this though, is becoming aware because if, if we don't, then habitually, especially if we practice self doubt and self criticism, and most people do that naturally, mm -hmm. if you don't like, and if you don't do it with, like kind of ritualistic approach, like generative, it's, there's a term called generative thinking as well. So generative thinking could, you know, you could practically put it into context here. So you could say, okay, generative thinking is like, when you get out of bed, you could say, this is going to be an amazing day. I don't know what's going to happen today, but there's a wonderful things. So I'm going to be interviewed. It's going to be awesome. And that's generative thinking, but also you could just take those questions about the problems that you have and just fire them at your mind. Because otherwise it will do the same thing. The familiar past is what happens every day and people don't recognize that. But if they 
looked at their future and asked questions and let the future pull them, then it's likely going to happen. There's a better chance. Unless you really want to just work hard and use willpower, which, like I said, is an energy vampire, yeah. right? you know, then then do that. But you know what? Most people will burn out and probably ruin their relationships and maybe their health all at once. So yeah. you know, why do that? Sacrifice themselves and their family and their relationships for business. Yeah, I, I, Dan, I'd be curious to know if you have any you know, kind of routines or, or tips or tricks for how you go about doing this. I know for me, um, I keep I keep a little, you know, tiny legal pad uh, on my nightstand and a pen there. And when I um, am kind of as part of my getting ready for bed routine, I'll just think back about my day, think about tomorrow, any any problems that come to mind and I'll and I'll write down things usually in the form of a question, although not always, um, but most often in the form of a question, problems that I want to solve and mm -hmm. that I maybe had difficulty solving during the day um, or, or something like that. And I'll, and I'll write it down and then I will go to bed. Yeah. Well, you're doing, you're doing something phenomenal because most people don't do this, but asking that question before you go to sleep lets your mind marinate and percolate on that, which is exactly what we want to do instead of trying to do the heavy lifting with your conscious thinking yeah. and, uh, and logic usually doesn't solve the problem. Anyway, it's using emotional, deeper problem that needs to be solved by a higher, more powerful mind. So, um, so to tap into that, I've taken it a step further. So mm -hmm. I have a, if you want to call it a vision board, but I call it the wall of obsession. So yeah. it's a wall of obsession and that wall is right over here behind me huh? or here. And it is, full of questions in great big text. And so basically I can't avoid it. If, uh -huh. unless I'm blind, it's there staring at me. <laughs> yeah. So, so that's part of a morning ritual that I have. And my morning ritual is bigger than what I'm talking about. But sure. one of the things I do every morning and I've actually, I have a bathroom of my own. So I actually did the same thing. I covered the whole mirror, except for a little spot in the middle. So, so uh, but if the whole mirror is covered and this wall is covered with questions that are pointing me in the direction of the, the things I want, right? Mm -hmm. It's solving the problems. And mm -hmm. so basically they're constant reminders and they're, and I'm hitting my subconscious mind with it repetitiously. Like if you think about building muscle, you go to the gym, you know, three times a week, whatever it is, right? Those reps after months, you realize, wow. Uh, my wife's noticing these muscles and man, I can feel them. And I actually can't even get my toothbrush in my mouth because I worked out so hard. And <laughs> yeah, have, you had, yeah, have you had that problem? I have, cause it's like, you, know, you have to take your arm and like literally pull your elbow. <laughs> but, but, you know, so that's the thing. Like if you think about getting your reps in, which atomic habits talks about that, then this is an easy way to get your reps in. You just, have to have this front and present. If you stick it on a computer screen somewhere or on your phone, it gets buried. But yep. if you have it out there, and I, I'm, you know, vision board, maybe people don't know what that is, but a vision board is where you put images and text and different things up there that really matter to you. Yep. Um, so I just figured, hey, let's make it simple, nice and big text. And if my eye catches it, I'm reading it. Yeah. So, um, so there's that. And even beyond that, there's something called the Optimist Creed. Have you heard of that? I have not. So the Optimus Creed, I've gone ahead and modified it because I thought it could be better and, uh, you know, surprising. And then, uh, so I took it and stuck it on my pantry door. Okay. So when I'm going to get water in the morning, uh -huh. I'm reading it. It actually has a sign there because I put it there. It says, read me. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I read it and it's just, these, these are affirmations more or less. Cause it's like, I promise myself to be so strong that nothing can disturb my peace of mind. These are statements. So I'm doing statements and then asking questions in other parts of my day. So it's that constant, like you think about this, like if you really want to solve a problem, like, you know, bleeding neck, burnt skin, yep. you're going to hit it with whatever you need to. You're going to figure it out. You're not going to just sit there and say, well, let's, let's see what happens. Right? Let's see. So let's see if my son stops crying, you know, with that burn on, him, you know, like maybe in a few hours. No. Wait, wait, gonna... wait, bleed to death. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if his skin doesn't stay hot pink. Uh, you know, okay. <laughs> right. No, we're going, we're going to solve it. So, 
So I've taken kind of the really acute approach to dealing with this. Mm -hmm. And so I'm testing it and mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. I'll mention one other thing that I'm doing, which is kind of cool. And yeah. I learned this from Dr. Benjamin Hardy. He's, he's written a book, 10X is big, uh, easier than 2X, uh, Be Your Future Self Now, some really good books, Gap and the Gain. Um, he's he's Gap, somebody that, Gap and Gain is amazing. That book is yeah. so good, so good. Yeah. So, so I'll say something about that and then I'll say something else. So I came up with the term gain mode. So how do you play gain mode? How do you stay in gain mode? Well, I have this planning system, this planner, and I've showed you before, it's a 12 week planner. So all we're doing is measuring against last week, measuring against the, you know, a few weeks before. How are we, what's the progress? What's the step, you know, what's, you know? And then the other part of the other flip side of it is reflection and review. So every 30 days, reflection and review. That's again, playing game mode on a 30 day, uh, 30 day span. Then the other thing that I'm doing is this. Ben talks about building time capsules. You've probably seen, seen Jimmy Donaldson's Mr. Beast video. Have you seen that one where he was talking to his future self? Okay. No, I have not. I know Mr. I know of Mr. Beast, but I haven't, I don't think I've ever actually seen a Mr. Beast video. So he was making prediction as to where he should be. And he's saying, I should be at least 40,000 or whatever. He was like millions of, <laughs> right. And he was just projecting outwards. Right. So I learned from Ben that we should do 30 day projections. So basically it's a video that I record either from my present self to talking to my future self or vice versa from future to present. So guess what? I decided to play at a higher level huh? every morning. I shoot a video that's a daily time capsule. And so every morning, it's my 9 p.m. version talking to my morning guy saying, here's what we did today. It was an amazing day and I just make it up. And, and I know I have things going on and I can talk about those things, but it's a daily time capsule. So I'm projecting what's going to happen that day just by going forward into my future, talking to my present self. So, so when 5 p.m. rolls around, do you go back and watch that video and, and evaluate success or failure? Or is that beside the point? It's, I guess it's sort of beside the point. I've actually never watched the videos back, um, but I probably would surprise myself if I did. And then, you know, but um, yeah, I guess there's a point to it, but I, I haven't, I haven't done that yet. I'm too busy just making the videos and doing other things and just, you know, I'm, I'm like this forward thinking machine that's just sure. go, I'm, you know, I'll go anywhere as long as it's forward. So I'm just doing that forward momentum. And then whatever evidence is showing up like crazy lately, which is mind boggling. And uh, in a way, I guess, but I, I, I'm now realizing, okay, I asked for those things. So yeah. I should shut up and say, you know, high five myself. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Dan, high five in the mirror. Why are you clapping, Dan? Why are you clapping? I'm high five myself. <laughs> well, Mel Robbins said high five yourself in the mirror. And so I guess we just do that, right? Like, hey, good on you. You're awesome. <laughs> Right on, right on. Very cool, man. I love, I love this kind of stuff. Um, I, I am the biggest, biggest believer in this stuff. And I'll, I want to, I'll, I'll share a short story um, that I may have shared uh, once or twice before on this podcast. Um, but when, you know, three, about three years ago now, my wife and I were sitting around our kitchen table at a little rental house in Vancouver, Washington. <clears throat> and we sat down at the kitchen table together with a notebook and we each uh, wrote down our perfect average day and what that looked like. On, on, mm -hmm. on, on our average day, what does a perfect day look like? And it was kind of, it was kind of a vision board. It was our, it was our forward projecting, right? And she had her version and I had mine and we read them to each other and they were very, very similar in a lot of ways. And in some ways they differed a little bit. And one way in which there was a definite confluence was us having uh, a property uh, in the mountains where we, where we love, where we can go hiking, where there's fresh air, um, having, having animals, uh, and starting a family. And it took us about nine months after we did that exercise to close on this property where we live now. Hmm. So nine, just, nine like, just like, just like the birth of a child, there was a gestation period, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, totally. And, and all that it was in, in, in retrospect, right. And, and what we did after that, by the way, I should add this is 
well, I, I'm not sure about her. I can speak for myself. I read my perfect average day every day. Every morning as part of my morning routine, I would read that as a reminder, which then triggered the reticular activating system, right? And, and, and it opened me up. So whenever I saw, uh, you know, a, a for sale sign, a land for sale sign or, or something like that, or, you know, looking on, uh, I would start looking on, what's the website? Zillow. Mm -hmm. for things and, and we found the pro we found a few different properties we must have looked at maybe half a dozen properties give or take and we found this one and, and fell in love and it, it wasn't nine months after we sat down at that kitchen table that we that we closed on it with the bank and started building our our dream home up here we now have a 15 month year old baby girl and another one on the way and it, mm -hmm. it, i can't i mean this this stuff might have fallen into place if we didn't do that exercise, but doing running through that created so much clarity for both of us. And it, it just, it, it seemed like everything, it was like an avalanche. It just all just kind of came at once and all just happened right away. It was amazing. Yeah. Well, look at you got your reps in and you said it clarity. So again, that hard drive, the subconscious, yeah. it needs images to, feed feed the possibility so you were plugging into the words and likely you were getting images in your mind and then when you started live you started seeing live ones then it actually solidified it even more but uh, also know this the imagination is the scissors of the mind so as you imagine things you start cutting out other possibilities right so other things that are not what you what you don't want so yeah, yeah the imagination is, scissors, is the scissors of the mind so you imagine things and then just like Tesla, he said, hey, I know I'm going to build the uh, alternator. Why? Because I imagine the whole plant, the manufacturing, everything from start to finish. It's, it's just going to happen just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. And so so getting your reps in like you did is critical. Mm -hmm. Most people don't have that kind of mindset or that kind of training or that kind of commitment. But if they did, can you imagine how fast they could progress? and then get to the point where they feel more in a state of flow, where they're not like pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah. Like that's you, what you did is you took the future and you let it pull you forward. You worked from the future backwards, yep. which is most people, they don't do that. They work from here and then climb the mountain with a bag of boulders on their shoulders, right? <laughs> like yeah. trying, trying to get up there. And the bag of boulders is their history and all their habits and practices and beliefs. Like that's the self-worth, right? That's the governor on people's lives that they don't realize that's there impeding them and you know trauma and drama and all that stuff that's back there because until you you know here's what has to happen when you start forgetting your past and remembering your future more which is what you did then your past just goes away you know the the rental and whatever else went away and the house in the mountains came right it's like you yep. you, you made it happen so yep. we call it you call it manifesting so you did you manifested it which is you, you projected and you, uh, you made it happen. And you're likely standing there in your environment saying, wow, this, this is. I'm this pretty is goddamn it. powerful. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, but you know what? And it's amazing. Like when my wife and I, we did the same thing by the lake, we wrote down what we would like our house to look like. And then we moved in we said, wow, this, this, this is it. Um, you know, and uh, it, it's unbelievable. Um, there, there's many stories like this where people actually do a little bit of a design or drawing of what they want, what their home looks like, their environment, and they put their attention and their focus on it, and then they get it. Like there's no, it's not not a you know magical thing that you know wealthy people are doing in the world. It's just it's just a question of how consistent and persistent they can be because it's all patterns, patterns of thought, patterns of action, patterns of awareness, and um, and the evidence starts showing up. Then we can't be like oh. I can't believe this. It's more like, ah, that's, that is it. That's what I asked for. It's, mm -hmm. it's perfect. Right. Like even, do you know, Florence Koval Shin, do you know her work? Nope. Uh, not. She wrote a book called the game of life. It was written back around the Napoleon Hill time, 1920s, thirties. But um, yeah, I mean, she just, she put things into context. So if you're asking for something, asking outwardly to God or the universe, she just says it like this open the way for the perfect plan and the perfect pathway open the way mm -hmm. Get what you want and just say open the way ask for it right plug into your subconscious mind get the images in there the words the thoughts right get it full so it's clear 
and it knows what you want. You know, it's like me asking my wife to go to a restaurant. I'm not going to say, do you want to go for Indian? I know she likes that. I'm going to say, do you want to go for Italian? No. <laughs> do you want to go for uh, Chinese? No. Okay. All right. And then we, you know, we get the nose out of the way. Right. And then we, then we, you know, now, now she's getting irritated and I'm actually going to get the answers I need. So the subconscious is the same way. You got to ask it questions that are going to take you where it needs to go. Right. I like, like it. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I mean, it's just, we don't think about this. Like we're in a binary universe, night and day, in and out, up and down. Right. So we have to have contrast. Okay. So if you play the game of self-doubt, self-criticism, worry, guilt, fear, well then, What's on the flip side of that? You know, it's faith, it's intention, purpose, passion, meaning. Those are the things, right? And if we give our attention to that and then ask questions, then yes, things are going to show up. And then people are going to say, hey man, how did you do that? And then you, you tell them, and then they're gonna say, oh, I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> that's pretty, that's a, that's a huge commitment, man. So, so Dan, how does all of this, so this is all fascinating. Again, this is stuff that I love, you know, three years ago, I didn't believe in any kind of, in any of this stuff. Cause I thought, it, I thought it was very woo woo. And I was blessed uh, at the time to have a coach who knew better and who guided me to, to do some of these exercises and who guided me towards the science of it to kind of help me realize um, that it's not all BS, that it's not all woo woo, you know, garbage. Um, how does, how does this play into your, your coaching? Um, how does this play into your simplifying the complex and, and, and breaking down bottlenecks and so forth? Well, what I've done is, I, and I'm using a system for coaching. There's a coach that built it with his team and other co-founders up coach by Todd Herman. He's, you know, you probably know who Todd is. He wrote the 90 day year and, um, alter ego. So um, anyway, they built the system. So I basically took everything that I'm talking to you about here and I put it into one platform. So I love 12 week sprints. So I took the 12 week year, built it into a model. Mm -hmm. And so then it's based on goals, motivations. Those are what pulls on your heartstrings. So I have that and it's always measuring performance backwards. So it's always managing tactics, things you can control, nothing that's out of your control. Otherwise you're playing not to lose. And then, so then that's the ultimate focus is to build that goal or those goals and it's business health relationships. We're measuring all three, because if you let health go, the other two can go. If you let relationships go, it affects your health and then your business gets impacted. So yeah, holistic approach, but then we're playing gain mode. So I took the gap in the gain. I planted that on top of my process. So now it's all about what can we stay in gain mode? Because what progress is a process. And what's the greatest progress or what's the greatest motivation? Sorry, progress. So mm -hmm. if people are making little incremental progress is they feel good. It doesn't matter how small, yeah. right? So little incremental progresses, and then we're doing regular projection and reflection. So every month reflect and review, actually every week we're reflecting and reviewing because that's the part of the planner, but every month we do a broader reflecting review. Why? Gain mode keeps mm -hmm. people in the gain mindset, right? And projecting forward, which is always thinking, what's the future look like? Like, it'll blow your mind. Like I wrote down projections for my brother and I, for us to grow his business. It went from 200,000 to 400,000 to 600,000 to a million. And I was just putting numbers on paper to give to the bank, right? Uh -huh. A P and L statement. I didn't know what I was doing and we're hitting these targets. And, and I didn't even realize it until I connected the dots. And I was like, man, all I did was project. So, uh -huh. so that's, that's part of my system as well. Um, but also there's a lot of mindset and psychology and brain science involved in it. So the other thing I'm doing is I mind map. So every time I have a call with a client, they tell me what their challenges are. I basically break it down into problems and solutions or obstacles and opportunities. Uh -huh. And I boil it down and give them simple, they find the way out they find the solution and then they have tactics and those tactics are pathways. They're called pathways thinking. So I give them those tactics as takeaways. They put them in their calendar and go to it. And then next week we review, how did that go? Did you crash and burn or did you get it done? <laughs> and then, and then, so that's, that's the process I'm using. Um, but I, I've taken all of these beautiful systems out there and married them together. And then the final thing is standards. 
most yeah. people don't know what their standards are. They don't know what they stand for. So I help these founders build their personal standards, team standards, business standards, and then everything, everything meshes the puzzle. So that way there's no wiggle room. They know that their standards are being you know, lived by in their business mm -hmm. because everything filters down and you get buy-in from your team. But those standards help police things that way there's less heavy lifting because I have some clients that they have, they're, they're psychologists. They're, they're dealing with emotions all the time and excuses and blaming and complaining, man, you can't 10 X your business like that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, so I'm removing all these obstacles, right? Simplify, standardize, multiply. That's the process. And I've done it and I didn't know, but I did it. And now I'm teaching others and I help them do it too. There are standard operating procedures in there as well. It's what do they need to simplify things and get things off their plate, help mm -hmm. other, be, other people be self-accountable, self-reliable, and take action. Nice. Very cool, man. Um, you know, obviously I've, at, at Boxer, we do, we do marketing for coaches. So I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, what, what are you doing for marketing these days? How are you marketing yourself? How are you getting new clients? What's your, what's your plan around that? Well, um, I'm actually using a little more of uh, the universal power than I am uh, things on the ground, but I do have things on the ground as well. So I have a combination of go high level and flow chat. Flow chat is for LinkedIn communications and pipelines and so on. Uh, so that's just to engage, but really I'm sifting and sorting for hungry, humble and smart people. Mm -hmm. That's who I'm looking for. That's from the ideal team player, this book that I, I just love the concept though. And I like working with people that are hungry, humble, and smart. And um, so um, so in terms of marketing on the ground, it is flow chat combined with high level and you know whatever I need to do in there. But I am not like, you know, breaking my back trying to do that. Instead, I'm basically looking for people by referrals. And, and so I, I seek that. So now that, now that I know the power of what I'm teaching and talking about today, then I'm just going for that. So hungry, right. humble, and smart founders out there by referral. Very cool. Do <laughs> you have a for referrals? Do you have a specific referral process? Um, for referring me? Yeah. So if you're working with a client, um, you know, and you get, you get, a, you get a big win with that client, do you, do you then like go to that client and say, Hey, we just had this big win. You know, do you have anyone, do you know of anyone that you think might also benefit from something like this that you could introduce me to? Do you have a, a system for, uh, asking for referrals? Yeah, well, that's one of them. And I learned a little something from Evan Pegg and the same thing. So it's like, or maybe it was, uh, it was, uh, I don't know, maybe it was another book I studied, but you know, the same thing. So it's, it's about, I don't necessarily ask the question of, you know, them directly always for a referral, but ask who they know. And then ultimately yeah. it gets their mind tuned into thinking about who they know. Yeah. And then they will probably send those people to me. So, um, but, uh, but I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm really, I just have a faith and um, it is, it's, it's working phenomenally. So if I keep doing that, then I guess I can just trash all the other marketing, um, you know, so <laughs> but that probably doesn't sound good to you because you'll probably be like, that's not going to work. But, um, but you know, I, I, would, I, mean, I would recommend, I would recommend a, 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 a metered approach to both. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is like, what I'm doing is like, it's organic and yeah. it's communicating yeah. with people. It's providing value. It's commenting on influencers posts and engaging with them. Um, I'm fortunate, like my wife studied with a guy named Gabor Mate. I don't know if you ever heard that name. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah, no so, so she studied with him. We went to an event, saw him. I met his son, because Gabor and his son wrote the book, this last book together. Mm -hmm. And I've been connecting Gabor with these big podcasters. Somehow I got to know them. So I'm guessing sooner or later, I'm going to be on these big podcasts because I introduced them to some phenomenal people. Uh, so I, I'm already setting up the groundwork for bigger and better things just by being a value. So yeah. I'm all about providing value and uh, and contributing where I can. But, you know, looking for the kinds of people that have the heart where they're, you know, they wear their heart in their sleeve mm -hmm. and uh, and they're out there to do, do good things. They want to create a better world, a better place. And um, so, you know, it's easy to resonate with people like that in the world. You don't have to hunt for them. They're they're not they're not. Millions of them, maybe there are, but they're kind of scattered. Right? 
so, yeah, you're probably like that. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, that's the thing. Like most people are just drifters, like from Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil. So yeah. they're drifting. They consume garbage TV. They consume garbage food. They abuse substances. So there's self-abuse, substance abuse, all kinds of abuse. And then there's a small percentage of people that are actually aware and thinking about making the world a better place. And so mm -hmm. I'm really searching for those people. I don't really want to work with, I, I couldn't work with somebody with a big ego um, or somebody that's kind of doing harm to the world or society or our, our youth or something, you know. Um, I've had opportunities like that and it's tough. Like, it's like, that's business right there. I could just, I could just say yes. Yeah. But then I'm like, man, how can I support that? You know, ethically, morally, yeah. you know, my standards. Yeah, you gotta be, you gotta be authentic to yourself, yeah. man. I mean, if, if it's, there's, there's definite, I, I can see how that could be, uh, there could be some pull toward that direction because it is, you know, it, it is business, right. And you got a mortgage to pay and, and a family to take care of. And, and at the same time, you, you know, you've, I mean, really you're blessed to have a conscience. <laughs> yeah. But here's like, I got really clear on this with Bob Proctor. He was one of my mentors. I started with him. He's the one who certified me. And I remember him saying this clearly, you have to let go of something that's a lesser value for something of a higher value. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get it until, you know, the past dozen years or so, but you know, it's like, that is critical because you always have to let go of something to make space for something better. He calls it the vacuum law of prosperity. So mm -hmm. in a vacuum, like a closet full of clothes, if my wife's closet is full, which it practically is, um, you know, are we going to fit anything else in there? Or do we have to like find another closet in the spare room? <laughs> you know, if we are, that's an issue, right? So it's like, let's get rid of some stuff, make some space. And so the mind is the same way and your life is the same way. So you have to take stuff that's low value, make space for higher value. And yeah. uh, sometimes it means letting, I let go of people. Uh -huh. uh, you can fast on food. You can also fast on people. And yeah. so, you know, people fasting, new term. Um, but, you know, so I fasted on my grade 10 friends because I, I went to a higher level of education and made new friends, you know, so, uh, but sometimes that's, you know, that's necessary. Like you have to let go of stuff that just isn't going to move you where you want to go. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's, uh, uh, that's a good, that's a good piece of advice for, for anyone who's, who's listening to this and is, is, you know, maybe working or in the midst of, or just beginning, like turning something around in your life. Um, it, it, you know, what's the, uh, I think is Jim Rohn said you are the, the average of the five people who are most around you, you, you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know there was a point in my life, um, where I was, I was bartending. I was a high functioning alcoholic and just, you know, uh, floating around being a drifter. And, uh, and, and it was fun, but it wasn't going to, it wasn't, it was, it was fun and it wasn't going to serve me in the long term. Um, and, and at, at the time that I decided that it was, you know, uh, time for me to upgrade my life, there was, uh, there was a definite distancing that had to happen between a lot of my very close friends from, from that period of time. Yeah, I had, I did the same thing. There was a point in my life where alcohol was just too much to handle. A lot of bad things happening, and um, yeah, I just I just had to say ah, no more. And then fortunately, I met my wife, who's running marathons, who couldn't drink because some sort of enzyme in her gut or whatever. And I'm like, all right, I guess no more drinking. Right? And then you can't do all this training for marathons uh -huh. and drink. So uh, yeah, so that's 23 years ago. Your uh, wife. So yeah she's asian yes my wife my wife's chinese i think that she has similar similar thing with the, the lack of the enzyme <laughs> yeah and i'm grateful for it you know and but also yeah. you know you just can't handle you can't manage both so it's either you're training at a high level or you're drinking at a high level and so there was going to be no drinking otherwise i would have been you know separated but um so um but the thing is yeah we were just we we're training and training and training in the gym a few times a week doing all these classes and stuff and so um you know, the, the focus just became so clear that that's what needed to happen. But the discipline to run marathons, we did 10 years of that. And that's yeah. just like, you know, 
you, lot. you don't you don't have time to mess around you're like this is train time doesn't matter rain or shine snow blizzards you know we did two two hours on a treadmill one day i'll yeah. never do it again but two hours it's boring so oh, sure boring. sure <laughs> I bet. Yeah, two hours because that was our commitment we had to do two hours that day as part of our training so um you know but we put it in and that's uh, it Dan, I want to be I want to be respectful of your time. I know we're coming up on the hour here, but one thing, I one story, a real quick story, I'll share with you. There was another uh, coach on the podcast um, that told this story, and and essentially there was a it was the Australian uh, Olympic rowing team. Stop me if you've heard this, and there they were the yeah they were the Olympic rowing team in Australia and their coach had this, uh, this, this motto that everyone on the team had to ask, ask themselves before they did anything. Does it make the boat go faster? Yeah. Right. And that, and this, and this is obviously like a clear metaphor for life. This can be applied to absolutely anything. And this is something that we say at boxer all the time. And we, we use the boat metaphor, right? The boat being boxer does this make the boat go faster the boat can be your life the boat can be your business the boat can be anything you know the boat could be your marathon you want to go out for for you want to go out to the pub for a pint on friday night does it make the boat go faster if the answer is no then you're not going Mm -hmm. and it's just such a it's such a great way to approach i think it's a a really great way to break habits it has been for me anyway because it's just such a simple question and it's, it's very very easy to answer yeah, you can do this with a multitude of things. You can even look at food and say, will this help my brain? Mm-hmm. Is this good for my brain? Make <laughs> right? the boat go give, yourself, <laughs> give yourself a moment. Yeah, is it going to make the boat go faster? Am I going to make my brain go faster? Uh, corn chips? Uh, probably not. <laughs> no. Okay, put it down, right? And that's it. Talk yourself off the cliff, right? And um, it's, it's such a simple, simple, simple question that's so quick and easy to answer. Um, it has it has been invaluable for both me and my personal life and for for us at Boxer. Um, so I thought I, I, I thought I'd share that with me. That's a, that's a really good one. Yeah, just think how it narrows your focus, right? It's like, you know, there's no way out. It's either is this going to help or not? If yes, it's, there's, there's no gray yeah. area. Yeah. If it's a no, then it's a no, then dump it. Right. So, yeah. no, that's it. So. Awesome. Dan, this has been a fantastic conversation, man. I love talking about this stuff, as you can tell, because I've, I've been probably been talking a lot <laughs> this time. Um, I appreciate you making time to chat with me. Where can our viewers and listeners connect with you online? Well, the best place is LinkedIn. I live on that uh, a few days a week, and um, I, I, have a weekly, I have a weekly newsletter I put out, so I'm always providing insights. I'm basically taking everything I'm studying and learning and watering it down and putting it into articles. So I'm giving everybody's Coles notes of all the different things I'm learning. And I fuse things together because, you know, there's just too many systems out there. And I think some of them make too much sense to put together, like my plan or in game mode, right? You just, <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, but yeah, great research, great teachers out there. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm the student that's putting it together and making it easy for everybody. Love it, man. Um, so we'll have links to your LinkedIn uh, on the show notes page for this. Um, do you still have Instagram and Twitter? Are you still active on either of those platforms? No, not not nearly. I am occasionally, but you know what? LinkedIn is really my you know, my home. I think that's the, the, the big one. Awesome. Good to know. Good to know. And then uh, we you brought up. Gosh, I've got notes here on about a dozen different books, so we'll we'll link to those books on the show notes as well. Um, some of these I can definitely speak to. Alter Ego Effect by Todd Herman was amazing. Um, you know the what was the other one? Uh, Gap and Gain. Ben Hardy. That was uh, my wife and I listened to the audiobook together and loved it so much that we each bought our own copy of the actual book so we could uh, scribble in the margins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's and Ben wrote another one called be your future self now, which is really good because it's all about future thinking. And he just came out with one that's called 10 X is easier than two X. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's on the same uh, train of thought. And um, it's all about 10 Xing your life and your business, narrowing your focus, singularity, removing bottlenecks, um, all those kinds of things. So so that's brilliant. I mean, there's so many great books, but uh, but you know, the little book of affirmations, that is turning your problems into questions and the psychology and science behind that is is simple but once you get it 
and you start turning your problems into questions and you know it's it's going to be like you're just manifesting like crazy and, you, and eventually you'll probably have to stop because you have too much so. <laughs> that's, that's a game changer that's a game changer <laughs> abundance is life um Awesome. Dan, uh, thank you again for, for joining us. I really appreciate you making time to chat with me again after so long. Um, it's been great catching up. Thank you to our viewers and listeners. This show means nothing without you guys. You're fantastic. Uh, be sure to please like, subscribe, and share this with someone that you know who you think might appreciate uh, some of Dan's messages here. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, thanks, everybody. We'll see you guys next time.